Jupiter Media presents Avasar Telecasting Global Opportunities Hello and Namaste welcome to Avasar program this program is all about education and educational opportunities today we are going to talk about the Nepal's main problem unemployment so to address unemployment what sort of the steps has been taken by LCCI Global Qualifications and Scottish Qualification Authorities jointly. To explore all about it, we have very special guest from Scottish Qualification Authority who is none other than Margaret Cren. She is looking after International Regional Manager South Asia. Let's welcome her to the show. Margaret, you are welcome on our show. Thank you very much for um, allowing me the opportunity to, to meet with you and to share with you some information about SQA and the work here that I'm doing in Nepal. Thank you so much. We are quite happy to have you with you so that we'll be able to clear about the study opportunities, vocational education and how to reduce the main problem of Nepal on employment. So first of all, let's have a talk about the Scottish Qualification Authority and what brings you to Nepal. The Scottish Qualifications Authority, SQA, is the national awarding and certification body and authority in Scotland. And our role there is to provide certification and qualifications across every industry sector, um, all aligned onto our national qualifications framework, which is benchmarked and recognised by the qualifications frameworks throughout the United Kingdom and throughout Europe. And we're also very much in engagement and discussions with countries all over the world for that mutual recognition and acceptability of internationally recognised qualifications. Um, SQA has been in existence for almost 100 years in one way or another. So we've been working in education for a very long time. In Scotland, we would be best known for our work in the schools and the colleges sectors where we provide the high school examinations to enable young people to leave school and go on into either apprenticeships or vocational programmes or into universities to enter into undergraduate studies. But overseas and here in Nepal, our major work is working with partners for the development of vocational qualifications to best meet the needs of the country and of the people who are seeking to benefit from undertaking internationally recognised and accepted qualifications. So that's one of the reasons why we are working here in Nepal. How has been your journey in Nepal over the years, especially Scottish Qualification Authority's partnership with LCCI Global Qualifications? Sure. Well, that's the very reason I'm here in Nepal this week is um, I was participating in a, a major conference on the future of vocational qualifications um, with our partners LCCI Global Qualifications. And that is what we have been doing with LCCI Global Qualifications for some nine years now. And we have been focusing on the development of the skills qualifications in hospitality and global culinary arts to enable young people to develop their skill set in them, to enable them to either seek employment here in the very fast growing hospitality and tourism sector of Nepal, or to go and seek employment overseas, and are of increasing interest to many of the LCCI students is the opportunity for them to go and seek further studies, gaining advanced credit through their SQA certificated programmes that we have. What's unique about these programmes is that they are developed by LCCI, so they're Nepali owned qualifications that are recognised globally. And that's where I think the real added value comes in for the young um, men and women who after leaving school have got so many choices, but they want to have credible choices and they want to have choices that are actually going to benefit them in their future either future learning path or in the workplace so that's the main reason I've he been here this week and also 
as part of the journey with LCCI, we are now expanding into other um, vocational areas, including information technology, IT and animation programmes. Because again, there's an identified need for young people to have better skills in the whole IT and digital technology sector. So very excited as well to be here to launch the IT programmes with LCCI partners. How do you see the vocational educational and its future here in Nepal? Well, I think it is vitally important for governments all around the world and here in Nepal to recognise the importance of value of developing vocational skills. But you have to develop those skills in, in a way that is going to ensure that the young people undertaking and developing those skills are truly competent. Are they going to be industry ready? What's crucial in the development of vocational skills is listening to the employers, to industry bodies, to other stakeholders who are employing many people and know what their workforce, know what their companies and large organisations need. There's technical skills, there's vocational skills, there's the softer skills. It's an entire package. We must be much more proactive in being able to develop curriculum and assessments to enhance students' work readiness. It's so, so important that students are able to enter into the workplace after undertaking a vocational qualification and be work ready. And it's not about, for example, we're sitting here in the lovely environment of the Radisson Hotel, which I might add has been a wonderful experience for me with customer service and everything about that. But it's those softer skills as well, those human skills, now meta skills about collaboration, about team working, um, about problem solving. All of these now are so important to integrate into the actual technical and industry specific knowledge that they also require. So I'm hoping to engage further with the vocational authorities and, and the government to see how SQA might support them because we're responsible in Scotland for the development of curriculum in every vocational industry sector. And we rely on all of those industry bodies, all of those stakeholders and organisations that can tell us exactly what they need and what their, what their future employees need to be successful in the workplace. What strategies should be taken to improve vocational education and training industry in Nepal? A very good question, a very good question. And there are always challenges um, in different countries with how one might develop and adopt or enhance their own kind of system, if you like, in terms of vocational um, qualifications. So, for example, um, one of the organisations that I have met with this week has been the Nepal Vocational Qualification System who are looking at the implementation through the Education Act of their national qualifications framework. And that qualifications framework will enable young people to have parity of esteem. And by that, I mean recognition of vocational qualifications on the Nepali qualifications framework in the same way that academic qualifications are recognised. I think also we learn from each other. I think the country must be outward facing because we can learn from Nepal in so many ways, but Nepal can also learn from other countries in so many ways as well in terms of developing and providing opportunities for young people to have better choice about what qualifications they want to take and with what type of organisations they want to take. I think it's important for all forms of um, government entities to be able to give freedom of choice for young people um, in terms of if they want to choose to take an international qualification, that they have the opportunity to do that. And I met with somebody just this afternoon who has been offering um, 
undergraduate programmes in hospitality management for, for over 20 years from a Scottish university. But I think there is a, a little bit of a challenge for other private sector organisations to be able to offer internationally recognised qualifications in the vocational sector and in the vocational um, areas. And this, I think, is, is not allowing students to have those best opportunities to develop their skills and, very importantly, to have those qualifications and skills recognised internationally. And that's where the joining and mutual recognition of qualifications on the Nepal Qualifications Framework, on the Scottish Qualifications Framework, the European Qualifications Framework, I think will enable that much greater dialogue between the different countries. What strategies do you believe would be effective in enhancing the visibility and awareness of LCCI Global Qualifications and SQA's vocational education program among Nepalese students? Well, I think that is already happening. I think what is happening is that the students of LCCI Global Qualifications are already being very successful in being able to develop not only proven competencies in the hospitality sector and the global culinary arts sector because integrated into their um, qualification is the opportunity for work experiences and internships and many of them have the opportunity to gain practical experiences here in the developing hospitality sector in hotels all over the country, not just in Kathmandu, but in the eastern and western provinces, but also for students to be able to have their qualification accepted and recognised for credit transfer to international universities. And LCCI Global Qualifications have been very successful in developing partnerships with the international universities community for to enable students to get that credit transfer into their programs to allow them to travel overseas to complete their bachelor's programs with credit transfer and students now have so much information at their fingertips they know what universities are good, they know the standings of universities, they mu are much better equipped than I was at their age without the access to the internet to understand what actually is important in terms of qualifications and that passport, that passport to future success for gaining a bachelor's and or gaining better paid work opportunities overseas should they choose to travel overseas and that is to the absolute benefit of the government and to as well as to themselves and to their families because the remittances from overseas workers is so important to the government but why don't we why are we not sending better skilled people overseas and this is what LCCI has been striving to achieve over the last nine years. How do you envision collaborating with local educational institutions and government bodies in Nepal to ensure successful implementation of SQA vocational courses? Well, my vision is to be able to um, develop partnerships with high quality educational institutes whose main remit and focus and ambition is to provide quality education for their students and to provide a range, a choice of what quality programmes that they're going to offer, including international qualifications and programmes from the Scottish Qualifications Authority. As a national body, we have qualifications in every industry sector. So we would be delighted to have the opportunity and the permissions to be able to happily engage with these organisations, to have the, them recognised by the local and national governments in order to provide that quality of choice for young people. Because I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about 
the recognition of our qualifications. The benchmarking and quality standards is also something that's so important. Students have so many choices now with qualifications and certificates, but not all certificates are equal. We pride ourselves on our quality assurance standards, which are nationally and internationally recognised. And our reputation is maintained because we select our partners very carefully. We continue to quality assure those organisations on an ongoing basis. We are very rigorous in our approach to that to ensure the integrity, meaning and value of the certificates that the young person will work so hard to achieve. In what ways can you, Scottish qualification authorities, tell her its vocational program to align with the specific need and the demands of Nepal's job market and industries? Well, I think we can do that in so many ways by being able to offer um, our existing portfolio of qualifications, of which we have many hundreds of qualifications at different levels. We have qualifications on one framework, so our qualifications have equal standing because it's all about the level of the qualification, which is about the complexity, and then it's about the number of credits. So what you then have to look at is to be able to understand what are the priority industry sectors within Nepal that people need training in? And do we need to adapt and localise those programmes for Nepali students is another option as well. So, for example, there is a very big and growing demand in the computing sector, IT, digital technologies. Ten years ago, had any of us ever heard about cyber security? Now, it's fundamentally important to any business and organisation about security. So digital technologies are developing so quick, so fast. We have the capacity, the expertise, the capabilities in developing curriculum, assessment models in every industry sector because we have such a well-established model. Agriculture, Food security now uh, is very important. Agricultural methodologies, technologies, again, are changing all the time. How can we work with stakeholders and government here to provide the qualifications that will develop the skills for young people in those key industry sector areas? There are so many. There are so many different industry sector areas. But it's about listening it's about listening to what the stakeholders and about what the government wants and needs in developing the education systems and equipping the young people with the skills that they need. What's happening in Scotland is different from what's happening in Nepal. There are, of course, overlaps because we are an increasingly global world, but one always has to listen, respect and understand the needs of a country and work with them to help them achieve their own ambitions and to help them achieve and develop their own national strategies. Could you elaborate on the potential role of technology and online learning platforms in delivering SQA vocational courses to wider audience in Nepal, including those in remote areas? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, one thing that's happened in the last few years is that as one of the, might I say, very few uh, benefits or positives coming out of the global pandemic of COVID has been the faster development of digital technologies and online learning platforms. So online learning platforms had to be adapted in order for learning and education to continue. Um, here in Nepal, LCCI very quickly further developed its own capacities in that regard so that students in outlying and more remote and rural areas could continue with their programmes of study by doing it online, by having online lectures, by in harnessing and developing the technology to ensure that the programmes could continue. The, the online method of learning 
is going to be vitally important um, going forward. Again, because it provides also greater flexibility. So students who might be working full time and not able to attend a programme full time have an opportunity to learn at weekends or on a part time basis. The technologies that are being developed to offer online learning are incredible. What you can learn now, you can't imagine that you would have been able to do these programmes online um, five years ago. But now we are very much moving to a hybrid model as well. There will always be face-to-face -face, and that face-to-face -face human uh, engagement is and will always be so very important. But it's about having different models of learning, different models of engagement to provide that choice to students. How do you intend to measure the impact and success of the SQA vocational education promotion efforts in Nepal, both in terms of student outcomes and economic development? Well, the, the, the student outcomes are very easy for me because I know about the quality, the integrity, the quality assurance, the standardization of our programs. And I know that the value of those certificates that young students will gain on completion of their program based on our models of operation. And we are not the easiest um, authority to work with because we are so stringent and we are very, very focused on maintaining quality standards. Because quality standards here in Nepal for SQA qualifications are exactly the same standards as what happens in Scotland or the UAE in our approved centres there or in Canada or China. So the standards are exactly the same and we have a very large set of experts, large number of experts who support SQA's work in ensuring those national standards are met. Also important is about being able to evolve, change, adapt, update your curriculum and your assessments so that you continue to ensure the validity and the appropriate content of qualifications, vocational qualifications, so that those students are job ready, are able to enter the workplace and from day one make that contribution and or have that credit transfer that will allow and enable them to enter into the next path of their own learning journey. Thank you so much for your valuable time and thoughts. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure and I look forward to continuing uh, SQA's work in Nepal. I love coming. Uh, the people, the food, it is always an absolute delight. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Our sir, telecasting global opportunities.